Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 represents our own vision of what could be Sherlock's younger years. We aim to provide a convincing storyline to portray his transformation into a compulsive and distant genius. The game relies on certain psychological concepts, such as self-acceptance and coping with trauma. And today we want to talk about how we approach Chapter 1's narrative in our cinematics. We never really had a Sherlock Holmes story that complex before. A story with a clear defined development arc, with challenges that impact Sherlock and expose his weaknesses. It's a deep dive inside his mind and it needs to be communicated properly. There is no room for exposition dumps here. If the game has something to say, uh, we want the players to interpret the message. And, you know, let's just hope that we did it right. Upon receiving pointers from the narration team, our cinematic artist put together a style guide for the game. This document covers techniques and approaches that follow certain rules, like camera angles, composition, and color palette. In this particular shot, we use negative space behind Sherlock to show how he dominates his opponents. It's like they are cornered and have nowhere to retreat. It's a powerful technique in cinema. And then it works the other way around just as well. We can easily turn the whole scene upside down and put Sherlock in the corner. It's a great way to emphasize a shocking or emotionally traumatic situation. Here Sherlock and John are having an argument, and I added a branch to emphasize that moment. I put them inside a frame that would be both separate the characters and force them to stay inside its boundaries. This amplifies the fact they cannot escape these disagreements. Again, frame within frames are quite a popular technique in the movies because it helps to build more complex compositions and add subtext to scenes. As you can probably guess by now, the Chapter 1 cinematics are heavily inspired by movies and photography. We use more or less the same tools here, like leading lines that help manipulate the player's gaze and other instruments. Lighting and camera angles can be a great way to present characters to the player. It's a nice visual hint at the nature of the person and their relationship with Sherlock. As Sherlock goes along his development arc, he will often find himself at the wrong side of emotional manipulation. Transition from arrogance to humility and back is a roller coaster, and there is plenty of room for a wider emotional diapason. If you look at all the Sherlock movies and TV series out there, you'll notice that they often have a different take on the character. It's easy to think of Sherlock as a cold, calculating man. But he's also very extravagant, a master of turning everything into a real spectacle, a theatrical performance, if you will. Sure, some of our cases are rough and gruesome, but a lot of them are fun and almost naive, because Sherlock has basically his childhood pal inside him all the time. Their playground suddenly became all grown up, but their demeanor is yet to catch up to this. And we try to convey the spirit of buoyancy and cheerfulness with our use of music and sound effects. The moment we walk through those doors, this one is inspired by the movie Amelie. I absolutely adored the style of that film, and I wanted to create something similar in our game. I think that particular type of visual narrative blends perfectly with our Sherlock and John, especially John, because we get a glimpse at who that guy really is. This specific montage, the comedy elements, they all help us do a proper presentation. John has some kind of panic attack in this scene, and I wanted to emphasize somehow that moment when your world is suddenly spinning out of control. Finding that vertigo effect was a bit of a trial and error, but in the end I thought, well, what if I literally rotate the world around him? It helped a lot that it's a very personal story, because it falls into a category of game that I always wanted to do. You know, that feeling when you watch a movie or play a video game and you are so invested in the story, where you connect with director on an emotional level, as a cinematic artist, I always wanted to achieve something like that, and I am anxious to see if it works.